Blog Talk Radio. You, you, you are now listening to the sound of the shofar blowing. The shofar is blown uh, to inspire the people to do their thing. And the ram song, the shofar is blown to coordinate a queen or a king. Uh, today, the shofar is being blown to call us to awaken the divine sexual healer within. This is Faux Show Holistic Health on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Shofar, from Faux Show Energy Work. And today, my guest is none other than Master Yao Morris. Master Yao is owner of the Grand Tron International. He is the author of The Return, also The Awakening, The Master Feminine, and the fictional book, The Oracle of Kim Sanu. And so without further ado, let's bring on Master Yao. How you doing? Excellent. Most excellent. Thanks again for having me on. Always an honor. Always an honor. Always a pleasure. Speaking of pleasure, we're going to just go ahead and jump right into it today because this is the last of the House of the Men. For those of you who have been tuning into the other shows, uh, if you haven't, go back and listen to them. But uh, this is the fourth of uh, uh, a four-part series where we break down the house of the man or the different uh, masculine energies that are out in nature and that are in human beings and how to awaken them. So today we're talking about the healer, the one who uses pleasure to heal. So in your last, in our last conversation on the uh, on the ego, Matthew Yao, you talked about how uh, we needed to, as men, be able to basically be able to, uh, not as, a, not as a, a luxury, but as a requirement, be able to bring pleasure to a woman. In other words, give her that, you know, it has to be a requirement that we give her that vitamin D. <laughs> you know, so um, can you go a little bit into that even further on this show? Why is pleasure healing? Well, human beings are made to live uh, a life of pleasure. In other words, what inspires us to to do what we do is that we're going to get pleasure from the result. Why does mm. a predator kill so that it can eat because it likes eating? It has an appetite to eat because it needs it. Mm. And pleasure is not just something that we occasionally experience. It's supposed to be the driving force behind all the things that we do which are good for us. So. We should have an appetite for something if it's natural, if our appetites are natural. We should have an mm. appetite to consume or do all of the things that are good for us. Therefore, pleasure is the driving force. So mm. we have an appetite to eat food so that we'll sustain ourselves. We have an appetite for pleasure, for sex, so that we'll reproduce and so that we'll change our behavior to become divine. We have an appetite for work. Uh, so a lot of people are doing things that they really don't want to do because it doesn't necessarily further them. But the things that you really like to do, you're longing in life, you want to do it. You're driven to do it. And mm. when you uh, uh, infuse pleasure into your partner, it awakens in them the means to know how to do it, and a greater drive to overcome obstructions in the process of doing it. So pleasure is absolutely critical. And today, most men don't properly employ it. But it's, it's the way that we should motivate our kids. You start hmm. out, you know, you discipline your kids. The main thing, you know, that should last maybe a year, two years, when they're three or four years old. Once you discipline your kids a few times, you should then mo motivate them through pleasure in terms of guiding them to do the right thing. In other words, make it pleasurable when they make the decision to do the best thing for them and, and reject the poor decision. Mm. We don't do that enough. Uh, the same thing you know, with the wife. The, the primary role of the healer is as the husband. So we have these women here, and the, and the woman is the nurturer. Uh, she has all of these things that she's supposed to do, 
And most of what a woman does is in service to others. So somebody has to take care of the nurturer, and that's the role of the husband. And that's primarily a sexual role. So to, to motivate her to become enlightened, this is a sexual role. To motivate her to want to live, this is a sexual role. To motivate her to want to overcome obstructions, this is a sexual role. The, the role of the healer is, 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 uh, is many things. But in terms of his role as a husband, his main role is to make life, to make her life, worth living. Let me say that again. Mm. God, what you please, please, please do, please do say that again. Of the male healer energy, uh huh, is to make the life of a woman worth living. Can I get a amen? <laughs> wow. I hope, so I hope those of y'all out there, family, that are listening. Take the time to take what he just said and really soak that one in. Sorry, about that. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but sometimes you just gotta you gotta you gotta let people know when you just drop one on them. It's like, you know, that solves a whole lot of stuff right there. Mm. And when we look at the women today and the situation that they're in, mm-hmm. we know that a lot of men are lazy and not on their job. <laughs> so I mean, when when we look at the male healer. You know, and you know, part of his job is healing, is to restore things to their best condition so that they can do what they do. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the role as a husband, it's not just enough to maintain the wife, to maintain her health, you know, to, to maintain her psychology. You you got to go a step further than that. Mm-hmm. You want the woman to wake up looking forward to life, Mm. that Mm. that she is present in each moment, and that that presence is a pleasant presence, so that Mm -hmm. basically she is happy, because, I mean, there's never a time in history when all of life was a joy. I don't think there Mm -hmm. ever was. There's going to be pain, sacrifice, hard work. There's going to be unpleasantness out in the world, but... The woman has to want to go on, not just constantly um, just maintaining. She wants to feel joy. She wants to feel exhilaration. And this is the male's role to give that to her. Wow. Again, family, you know, one of the things I, you know, in my personal practice when I really come across uh, something that really resonates with me I like to take it into meditation and really feel it in the body, let it be felt in the physical body. And what what he's saying here, definitely need to be some cells online that's, that's in alignment with this one. Uh, wow. In, in Chinese medicine, I'm asking how they talk about, uh, you know, how the yang and yin, when they interact with each other, how the, the yang actually takes, uh, you know, is supposed to unburden the feminine or the, the, the yin energy. So it removes excess heat and excess fluids, excess chi or energy uh, from the yin. But if anything on the planet right now, what we're seeing is that the yang energy is actually uh, putting more burden on the feminine. So I'd like to speak to that for a second. Uh, one of the things that I see in, in working with people, couples or wh- whoever, is that uh, a lot of you know men may like sex or love sex even, uh, or you know, like like you say, and you, like you said in the other show, juvenile sex. But a lot of men do not love women. We actually have, uh, as men, we have some blockages because of maybe our relationship with our moms or uh, how we view nature. There's a conflict there. Can you speak to that a little bit? It's it's a tough subject. Uh, when I look at the world today, it, it makes me sad hmm. because what you're saying is true. For, for reasons that are the fault of the woman and reasons that are the fault of the man and some reasons that were here before either of them got here, mm. a lot of men have disconnected. I, I think rather than say they don't like women, which is a true mm-hmm. statement for them, I think a more accurate thing is to say they are really disconnected from women. Mm. And mm. so, 
and they, they, they are existing sort of like in orbit around the woman, but not really mm-hmm. contact her. Mm-hmm. And this is dangerous, and it's, it's non-productive. Mm. Um, this is, you know, mm. the, the, the state between men and women today is, is pretty desperate. Uh, and, and, and as I said again, I mean, some of this is mm-hmm. the woman's own fault, no doubt. But still, mm-hmm. uh, we just have such a low level of maturity in men that they just mm-hmm. can't push past the obstructions and try to make some type of a connection with women that that's sustainable. Mm. If I guess if, if if you know if we could wave a magic wand and people <laughs> could walk in the other person's shoes, they would be more understanding and uh, communication would be better. Mm-hmm. But we just have such a preponderance of people who are doing evil, doing wrong, just for no real good reason. In many cases, the actions that men are taking don't profit them either. Mm-hmm. But when, you know, when you've had such, such a long and negative experience with women, the, mm. the reaction of a lot of men is to become adversarial. Mm. And they, they're, they're like cancer cells that are just, you know, uh, waiting for an opportunity to set up shop and steal nutrients, but they don't give anything back to the body. And when enough of them collect together, they form a tumor and try to create a separate body that's, that destroys mm. the first part. Mm. And it's not a good look. No, it is not. And uh, to your point, though, it is uh, unfortunately more prevalent on this planet at this moment than it should be. I think Part of it is because there's no rites of passage. There's no uh, tribal, you know, uh, transference of, of information from the ancestors or from the elders to the younger, the younger children and everything, and uh, that's part of it. I know in your book you're talking about the emotional trauma of not having a father. Uh, and, again, it can mean not having a father that's, period, in the household at all, no male role model, or someone who just, could even be there, but not, you know, present to this knowledge, not, not knowing this knowledge, not able to transfer this. So either way, there's still a trauma. Can you, can you speak to that a little bit? That's, that's a big subject right there. I'll try to. Huh. Um, you know, there's so many things missing. Hmm. The absence of the father in the home is primarily a product of the government. Hmm. And rather it's, Intentional or non-intentional, I won't speak to. Mm -hmm. But right now, the government controls marriage. The government controls children. The government controls um, who has custody, how things go. So men don't have control of the entire mating process, nor do women. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a situation where, uh, you know, For the first time in the last decade, child support issues have a greater negative financial impact on men Mm. than divorce. So, you know, from the 70s to the 90s and the early 2000s, a major economic burden to men was divorce. In other words, Mm. you're really trying to maintain two households instead of one. Mm. But... The, the whole child support thing now has gotten to a place where in some states, especially in the southern tier states, you have from 12% to 17% of the prison population consists of men who are in some way, shape, or form uh, not legal in terms of child support. So hmm. what what's wow. going on here is that at some point in time when it first started, the issue was about men supporting their children when they're not married to the mother, okay? Okay. Or they're not living with her. But it has escalated way, way, way beyond that. Uh, the, the, the Republicans or whomever have changed the laws gradually but steadily to add to this uh, uh, a bunch of conditions that basically 
almost guarantee that the man can't ever support his children. In other words, mm. it started out a long time ago, 30 years ago, as a means to get some money out of men to help children make ends meet. But now, mm -hmm. if you fall behind in child support, they make it hard to uh, register your car, hard to purchase a house, hard to keep mm. your credit rating up. They block mm. passports. They uh, wow. interfere wow. with federal security clearances. And the list goes on and on and on. So what happens then is that uh, when men get into the child support system, if he gets laid off, then the system is set up so that he can't recover. In other words, then the next thing that you do is they block your registration. You can't get to work. They block your security clearance. You use your federal. You lose your federal job. They block your passport. You can't travel if you're a businessman. And there's just like twelve or thirteen things that they do. They put flags on your credit report. They do. It's, it's just so many things that. So it starts out if the man changes jobs. He falls behind on his on his child support, and then these things kick into place, and then he can't get the job that he was that he was you know interviewed for because of the flag on his credit report. Then hmm. he can't ever get back up. He falls further and further behind. The next thing he tries to dodge, and if if the police stop him, and there's a warrant because they what they do is they issue what is called a contempt of court warrant. Hmm. And so then they can arrest you, and necessarily take you to jail. They may, but what they do is that that, it's a pro that it, it makes a problem where it could have been a routine traffic stop. It becomes a big deal now. Right. So when you have situations like this, what you have is that it makes it difficult for the man to connect with his child. So the right. boy at home, right. or the son at home, doesn't see all of this. Mm -hmm. All we right. see is that Daddy said he was coming at the end of the month, and he didn't come. Wow! Wow! So right. Daddy maybe was planning to come at the end of the month, but then he got into financial further financial distress, and basically he said, "Well, I don't want to show up to visit my son, and I can't bring him nothing. I'm broke. I can barely put gas in the car, and so he just calls it all." And this is this is happening, you know, so often. So what we see now is that, you know, the role of women in the father son relationship is bad enough, but the mm -hmm. government has intervened in such a way that it just makes things really really difficult. The the mm -hmm. second most um, negative development is 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 is, is addiction. So we have a large percent of men who are addicted to marijuana, alcohol, opioids, mollies, and other regular drugs. Mm. Or they're addicted to things like gambling. In other words, mm. uh, porn, prostitution, and things like that. In other words, because life isn't what they want it to be, or for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. they, they turn to alternatives that are not wholesome. And mm. probably the biggest addiction today is the addiction to prescription drugs. Mm. So they estimate between 15 and 35% of all black men have some type of addiction cycle going. Mm. So what happens then is when, when the man is trying to relate to the woman, his brain chemistry is altered by the alcohol, by the overuse of food, the wrong food, by prescription drugs, by opioids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And his mm -hmm. brain chemistry, he doesn't behave as he normally would. Mm -hmm. And so the man will interact with the woman in this state, but, he no but typically he refuses to interact with his children. Mm -hmm. So you see very often where the man will call the woman and they'll argue for 15 minutes and he's in a altered state, but he just won't talk to his his son mm. because, you know, he knows that he's not normal, he's not natural, and he just, rather than interact with his son, he just avoids it. 
Wow. This was a very real scenario today. Um, and the next thing that's really impacting men over 30, uh, over mm-hmm. 35, is sexual performance. Mm. So what happens is that because of so many things going on, financial, uh, health, whatever, you know, there are so many medicines now which impact a man's performance. And I'm talking about men 35 and over. So some of them have been taking these substances or they have a particular diet or, or there are other things going on so that, you know, their health is impaired. And this puts such a strain on them and puts them in such a frame of mind that they don't interact with their children to the level that they should. In some cases, they can't. In most cases, mm-hmm. they won't. They refuse to do it. Mm-hmm. So you have these three things going on. You have the whole child wow. support uh, drama. You have the uh, addiction drama. You have mm-hmm. the health drama. These three things here are having an impact on the father and son relationship above and beyond what they did 30 years ago. Way it's, 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 it's a whole other ballgame. Then you got other things that have less of an impact, like uh, you know, um, video games and uh, mm. cell phones, mm. sports. Yeah, you get men who spend four hours a day on social media, mm. and there's Stop nothing that's stopping them from stopping and interacting with their children. They're not making that decision. They're making the decision to to go on social media and do whatever it is that they do there because that's become their real life. Mm. Their real life wow. is suspended. They don't really have a real life. They're living in a virtual world now, and it's become a comfortable... It's like daydreaming used to be 50 years ago. <laughs> you know, you mm-hmm. sit around and about what you could do, and today that those daydreams are the virtual social media video game world, where you get immersed in that to avoid dealing with the reality that you don't see changing anytime soon. Right. Right. You know, I'm so happy that uh, (laughs) before, uh, you know, that, you know, like uh, where things are now, like, you know, say for instance, so you got the social media, you got porn just available to you on your daggone cell phone, and now they're taking it to the place So, like you said, virtual reality you know, porn and everything like i'm so glad that wasn't around when i was coming up because i might not be here talking to you right now um it's uh <laughs> i would have been one of them lost crops man uh it's just it's amazing well you know we already at the five minute mark and i want to talk uh you know at the end here about the solution in, in your book you talk about how healing begins with love so how do we, if, if people are like, you know what, I, I want to be a part of that change or whatever, what do we need to do to, to, to begin that healing process in ourselves and then also in our mate? We are experiencing something today called negative water culture. So mm. the African-American peoples and the African peoples and most dark-skinned peoples of other races, mm. you know, um, have a culture. So every elemental uh, race has a culture. So you have fire culture, you have air culture for the Asian peoples. The African peoples have water culture. And this is a product of the water elemental. And what's blocking the healer so much today is that the entire society is engaged in negative water culture. In other words, mm. our culture is first. It's, it's the, it's the um, antithesis of what it used to be, the opposite. It's, it's, it's not complementary. And, and part of this is due to the fact that in general, sex is repressed. It's repressed in the female, it's repressed in the male. And, and when I say repressed, less people are having sex, they're mm-hmm. having sex at a lower level, and the, the, the spiritual mechanisms that should be happening when sex is involved, when relationships are involved, are not in place. Mm -hmm. So the other part of it is, you know, 
is that we are not practicing authentic spiritual system. Mm-hmm. So when you look at the um, the structure of an authentic spiritual system, it's basically, it starts with the tree of life, and then from the tree of life, which is the blueprint of how humans operate. Then the next thing is that the water elemental transfers this information toward humanity. In order to communicate with the ancestors, entities, elementals, deities, and all these things, it requires Mm -hmm. either a man or a woman in trance who's capable of having oracle correspondence. So for the most part, this is a woman's function. Some men can do it, but women can do Mm -hmm. it much better. The the group of women who are best at this, who, who are the mainstay of this, we call them the mermaid clan, and that's mm. other names for them. But basically, they are the women who have an affinity for the water elemental culture. So, so the way that it looks is you have the tree of life, and then next from the tree of life, it goes to the water elementals themselves, from the water elementals to the women who have that ability, from the women to the male priest, and then to the population. And that's basically... Mm allowing the population to constantly evolve, to cultivate the God within them so that they become better and better, live better and better. That's how the healer is sought. So, and, and today what we have is that there are two gaps in this bridge. So you have this ladder or this connection between God and man. And we have two breaks in that connection. One break is that the, 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 the religion itself does not acknowledge the tree of life. So the religion is, uh, it's, a, it's counterfeit in that it's not set up so that people can evolve. So that's the first problem. The second problem is the women who are in the mermaid clan are not doing their job, partly because mm. the men aren't, aren't helping them to do it, and there's abuse and other things. But you have this group of women, and they are, they are born, they are designed, as conduits of the spiritual world to help people become more like God. So, you know, but the religions today are set up to worship an external God, not to cultivate the God inside you. And so Mm. this blocks the women and blocks the men and turns things backwards and turns our regular water culture into a negative state. It's a negative water culture. Then the suppression of sex so that you have this group of women, these uh, mermaid clan women, um, they can't do what they normally do because they they normally do it using sexual energy. That's one of the purposes of the Tantra. When, mm. when you look at many of the things in the past, one of the things that we talk about is the black Madonna. And so mm-hmm. people think that we're talking about a picture, an artwork, mm. but no, that's not the case at all. The artwork was invented, it, it, you know, the Black Madonna was, was, there were paintings of the Black Madonna before Jesus Christ in many mm. cultures. And the ones that were painted after him are the ones that they, you know, that the church talks about and, and art, the art community talks about. But it's not talking about the mother of Jesus. The reason the picture is black is because it's talking about the fact that the woman who is melanated is holy and has mm. a capacity to serve as this bridge between the elementals and man. Mm. So most, you know, most men, when they see these women, uh, they're, they're normally attractive, they're normally highly sexual, and they have all of these medialistic abilities, they are abused. When you, mm. you hear the parable of the sirens, that so many cultures talk about. They talk about sailors, mm-hmm. you know, trying to travel to a land that they, that's uncharted, that's unmapped. And what they're mm-hmm. really talking about is not sailors and ships at all. They're talking about the water elemental culture and the water elementals and the fact that men, the men on the ships, the sailors, they're really talking about priests. And these priests are not able to reach the, the, the tree of life, the deities and, and, the, and their spiritual objective because either they've abused the women, they don't have tantra abilities, or their religion is not set up so that they can cultivate the tree of life. 
So, of course, these sailors run, run aground and their ship sinks, meaning they're not able to have a true religious experience. And this is what is going on today. Uh, and those two things combine to create negative water culture. You have, number one, you have two breaks in this chain, this bridge, this connection between God and, and humankind. One, the, the, the religion is not set up to deal with the tree of life. So the religion itself has a, has a gap. Number two, these women who are like the linchpin, one of the connecting uh, links, are not capable of doing their job because they don't know it. They don't know what they were born for or the men don't have the ability to activate them, or their sexual energy is so suppressed that they are afraid to use it that way. Mm. So with, in negative water culture, uh, the situation is such that it's very difficult to bring the hunter online. To, I'm sorry, the healer online. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, 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 the process is spiritual. It's ritualistic for the most part. Uh, this this type of a negative water culture causes people not to finish puberty, so that's that's mm. the start of it. But then the tantric uh, 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 exercises, the education, all of the things that should exist, allowing the man to bring his healer online, he's fighting upstream. He's he's wow. swimming against the tide, and it's very hard for him to do it. In the book, Awakening the Master Masculine, we say how he can do it. But what we don't say in the book is that we are now in negative water culture, which makes it very hard to do. Now, we're also, whites are in negative fire culture, which is why the debt is so high, why the economy is so poor, and why you have a few rich people and everybody else is struggling. So, you know, we're in negative fire culture too, but... But the thing, but that's not stopping the hunt, the healer from coming online. Mm. What's stopping the healer today is negative water culture, and mm. to, uh, to change that on a massive scale, we have to change the, we have to upgrade the religious scenario, the spiritual system, and we have to upgrade the the sexual experience of of the women. Now, we the the ones that count are these mermaid clan women, the, who mm. maybe 5 6% of all women. But still, you know, as long as they're not doing their job properly, it's hard for the healer to come online. It's like the thing that really makes them come online fastest is the elegant rose table work. Mm. And the elegant rose women aren't capable of doing that table work because their mermaid clan faculty is shut down. Mm. So wow. you know, um, that's, not, wow. that's not what most people you know, want to hear. Huh. Uh, but that's the big picture. Individually, uh -huh. one can do it. He can read the book. Mm. He can you know, locate the exceptions, because there are exceptions, and the women mm. can do it. And he can follow the procedure, finish second puberty, and he can do it. But if you want it done on a large scale, if you want mm -hmm. to really bring millions of men into their healer energy in a short period of time, which is what should happen naturally, this issue of negative water culture has to mm -hmm. be addressed. Wow. Take that in. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know what? I mean... We can do it. We can do it. And, you know, uh, that book and and uh, the Grand Trine and what you've been teaching, you know, if we can do it with an individual, we can we can do it amongst, uh, you know, bigger and bigger groups. Uh, if you're out there listening, you know, family, you want to reach out to Master Yao. You know, you want to you want to get some more information, uh, you know, because right now we kind of find ourselves in, in choppy waters, you know, especially as guys, you know, out here trying to chase sirens and get off rocks and end up crashing against the rocks. You know what I mean? So um, in wrapping up here, Master Yow, someone, if this is resonating with them, if they want to get more information, they want to come to one of your workshops, they want to get your book, what's your website? How do they reach you? The, the main website is Grand Trine International. So 
It's www. Grand Trine. Trine is T R I N as in Nancy E. And we say international just I N T the abbreviation. So it's Grand Trine I N T dot com. And you okay. would go to the tab for store for the books. Go to the event page for events and classes, or you can go to the class page also. Uh, and there's also a contact uh, block on that site. Or uh, they can contact me at the Grand Trine, uh, at gmail.com, and they can con- contact us directly in the office. All right. All right. Well, once again, you know, uh, uh, definitely want to say I love and appreciate you, brother. I, you know, definitely, uh, again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yes, also, All right. you know, they can, mm-hmm. they can also contact me or they can follow me on YouTube at okay. the, the Master Yao channel. Master Yao uh, channel. They're called the Chronicles of Master Yao. And so there's a series of uh, YouTube videos uh, that, you know, that, that are talking about all of these subjects, what's in the book and more, and they can follow me on YouTube. Okay. Well, family, it's on you now. The ball is in your court. You know, so do what you will with it. Again, uh, we want to thank you all and uh, send out much love to all the listeners, and thank you. You're listening to Full Show Holistic Health on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Show Far, from Full Show Energy Work. And, again, thank you all for listening. Keep shining. Keep climbing. Peace.